Charlie Brown, now Charlie Brown. I can't believe it. She must think I'm the most stupid person alive. Come on, Charlie Brown. I'll hold the ball and you kick it. Hold it? Ha! You'll pull it away and I'll land flat on my back and kill myself. But Charlie Brown, it's Thanksgiving. What's that got to do with anything? Well, one of the greatest traditions we have is the Thanksgiving Day football game. And the biggest, most important tradition of all is the kicking off of the football. Is that right? Absolutely. Come on, Charlie Brown. It's a big honor for you. Well, if it's that important, a person should never turn down a big honor. Maybe I should do it. Besides, she wouldn't try to trick me on a traditional holiday. This time I'm going to kick that football clear to the moon! God! Isn't it peculiar, Charlie Brown, how some traditions just slowly fade away? Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is the next special event here on Napa Fan. It is the Thanksgiving 500, so before I get to anything else, happy Thanksgiving to all you Americans out there. Uh, I know that not everybody watching this is American, but uh, if you live in the United States of America, happy Thanksgiving. Anyways, 51 laps here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway, a new tradition here. Well, it's actually not really new, we had this last year, which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, still, it's kind of a tradition here on that fan to have a race here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway on Thanksgiving morning. And uh, one of my favorite holidays. It's one of the best days of the year. And we kick it off with this race. So let's get to the starting lineup. And on the pole, it is the number 14 of William Brock, making only his second start here on Napa Fan. We got some first-timers in this race as well. But here's the veteran Max Newarth in the 77. Nathan Stapleton. Cody Hagen. Julian Quintero making his first ever start here on Napa Fan in the number four. John Art, Mason Powers. We haven't seen him in a while, but it's good to see him back here on Napa Fan. Blaine Keys in the 81. Justin Roberts in the three. Nicholas Samadio in the 29. Matt Dalio in the 55. Tyler Selzman in the 93. Davey Johnson in the 21, John Anders in the 25, Dean Wickard in the 74, Tristan Walker in the 60, Eric Hyden in the 07, Matt Tuck making his first ever start on Napa Fan in the number 44, Marty Johnson, another first-timer in the number 57, Zachary Fitzwater, been a little while since he's been in a race here on Napa Fan, but he's returning, Stuart Grattan in the 42, Dana Mon, we haven't seen him in a long time either, great to have him back driving to number 75, Nicholas Grattan, Biff Crafton, Clint Buchanan, Garrett Sinor, Cameron Black, his second career star here on Napa Fan, Tristan Allen, Harry Jell Arvin Alonzo, Johnny Bryant, Kevin Gandara, and Jordan Newman. That's the full field starting here today at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway for the Thanksgiving 500. There will be pit stops in this race. I would probably expect to be either two or three stops throughout the race, I think. But uh, we're just going to have to see. Anyways, let's get this thing started. One of my favorite days of the year. Tomorrow we set up the Christmas tree and start all that nonsense. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Where does the year go? I mean, I came back here on YouTube back in March. It does not feel that long ago when I came back. It's just unbelievable. Just totally unbelievable how fast the year goes. I mean, I don't remember distinctly doing this race last season. Or last year, I should say. And here we are again for the Thanksgiving 500. This time, a little different. A little different channel, a little different channel style and all that. I'm a totally different person from the last time I did this race. But I'm better. Well, that's kind of selfish, but, you know, you know what I mean. Anyways, let's get this one started. It is 51 laps. It would be 50, but I was too lazy to go into the notepad and fix it. Anyways, here we go. Green flag is out. And we are racing on Thanksgiving morning in the Thanksgiving 500. 
And the sound pack is a little different because this is my second copy of Energy 2003 and it has the PTA uh, sound pack in it. So, yeah. William Brock is going to pull out to the lead. Nobody going alongside him. Nathan Stapleton trying to get a run, but Julian Quintero in the four. Going to get a run to the inside. On this inside, it's Blaine Keys in the 81. Now, as this race goes along, the race is going to come down to about, I say, five or six guys at the end. Because with the pit stops and all that, the pack's going to split up, and it's going to be between just a few guys at the end. Right now, though, everybody's in contention, and you want to be up front when you make that pit stop, and you want to have a good pit stop. That first pit stop is definitely going to determine who wins this race. William Brock leads the first lap of action. Quintero right behind him. Here's Nicholas Samadillo in the 29. And Tyler Selsman in the 93. There goes Quintero in his first ever start on FFN the last time. We oh, no! Trouble! There is trouble! I think. Uh, do my eyes deceive me? Well, they had trouble, but I think they got out of it. It's Jordan Newman in the 87. I think he might have gone around. No, yeah, sort of. Wow. We kind of did crash here. Look at this. Matt Tuck and the 66 of Tristan Allen. They get together, and they kind of save it. They come down, and they just push the 87 down the racetrack, and they do a good job not crashing. A fantastic job by those guys not crashing. We don't really want an early caution in this race. Anyways, Julian Quintero in his first ever start. I was about to say the last time we had a special event here on Napa Fam, a first-timer won that race. That was Wolfgang Stone. He isn't in this race. But uh, these special events are really nice to first-timers. And Julian Quintero leads the second lap of action here today in the Thanksgiving 500 comes Davey Johnson in the 21 to the inside of him. We got Tyler Selzman in this 93, the 74 of Dean Wickard. William Brock now falling way back in the number 14. When you get stuck on the outside here at the Coca Cola Super Speedway, you fall back like a rock. Davey Johnson, help from Tyler Selzman. Now Selzman goes to the inside of the 21. And the 93 of Tyler Selzman is the new leader here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. So Jordan Newman has fallen off of the pack. That is not good for this uh, 87, but if he has a good stop or maybe gets a caution here early, he might uh, get back in this thing. Stuart Gratton in the 42. Garrett Sonor in the 65. Johnny Bryant in the 10. Get this. They're all dodges. Now, we don't really see dodges too much um, in any racing here on Napa Fan. They don't race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, and we only have two of them in the Turkey Hill Series. They're nowhere else, but they're here in this race, and they're looking pretty good. There goes Garrett Sonor to the inside of Stuart Gratton and Tyler Selzman. And this is what I like about this track. The outside lane can get a run. Sonor is going to lead this lap barely over Stuart Gratton. Got the 07 of Eric Hyden. This is the 25 of John Andrews on this inside with help from the 55 of Matt Dalio. Garrett Sonor, the new leader. We're basically going to get a different leader each lap until maybe about halfway, and then they'll start you know, leading multiple laps in a row. And Tristan Allen is in the pit road after getting involved in that crash. He might have had a little bit of damage on that car. He might not stay on the lead lap. We're just going to have to see. There, uh, there goes John Andrews in the 25 to the inside of Garrett Sonor. Got Dana Mon in the 75. He's a six-time winner here on Napa Fan. One of the greatest drivers we have ever had on this channel. It has been since Season 2 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series since he has raced. Actually, sorry, it's been since the Indy Light Series since he's raced. Uh, but uh, it's been a very long time since he's raced here on Napa Fan. But it's great to have him back. He's driving the number 75. And Tristan Allen is going to go a lap down in the 66. That's a tough break for him. I kind of feel bad because in only my second race on his channel, my driver, Philip Watson, won. And he and Tristan Allen's been on this channel for quite a while. He only has three wins. But uh, it's a tough break for Tristan Allen. I, I just recently won that race, too. And uh, that's what happens to him. I mean, come on. I would not do that on purpose. <laughs> 
Anyways, Nathan Stapleton's going to lead that lap. I'm going to focus on this lead. It's changing frequently. It's Kevin Gandara in the 98 in the middle, Cameron Black in the 1. The thing I like about this race, you see the speeds, they are kind of high, but you know, they're reasonable. They're not going like 290 or 260, whatever that we had in the Great Pumpkin 250. This is actually realistic. I mean, these cars don't have restriction plates on them, and this is these are the kinds of speeds we would get at Daytona and Talladega if we didn't have restriction plates on the cars. Air Gel Arvin Alonso in the 5 takes the lead. Gene Wickard, Tristan Walker. So we got 30 cars in this pack, two of them right now. One of them still on the lead lap, that's Jordan Newman, but the other is a lap down, that's Tristan Allen. They have fallen off of the pack, and uh, Jordan Newman is definitely hoping for a caution, but it's not looking good for Tristan Allen at all. Hopefully for him, he might get a quick caution here, stay out, and get the lap back for him, but uh, right now it, is, does, it does not look good for the 66 of Tristan Allen. Here comes Dean Wickard underneath the 5 for the lead, down the back stretch on lap 8 of 51. Here in the Thanksgiving 500, the NRLOA Thanksgiving 500. Nathan Stapleton in the 33, with the 60 of Tristan Walker, the 3 of Justin Roberts. Davey Johnson on this inside. I'm going to focus on that inside because the inside is the place that advances here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. Those are the drivers, those are the cars, it's the line that you want to be in if you want to get out front. Whereas basically, this is the kind of race where, at least at this point, you can be anywhere you want. Uh, I mean, you don't really want to be like off the pack like Jordan Newman, but if as long as, as long as you're in this pack, you're fine. You don't need to be leading. You don't need to be on the inside. All you need is to just be in the lead pack. And these guys, they're starting to stack up a little bit there. The three of Justin Roberts had the lead there for a moment. Now Davey Johnson trying to take the lead from him. About this 93, Tyler Selzman moving down to the inside lane. Zachary Fitzwater in the 84. He's going to go three wide for second place. The 21 of Davey Johnson led that lap. Here comes Biff Crafton. We haven't seen Crafton in a while here on Napa Fan. Forgot to mention that during the starting lineup. But he's up to third in the number 43. Stuart Cratton. He's running in fourth right now in the 42. We got Tyler Selzman here. We've we, Tyler Selzman has been up here basically the whole time, <laughs> which is quite a, quite hard to do. Kind of hard to stay up front in one of these races, but uh, he's done it. There goes Zachary Fitzwater to the lead underneath the 21 of Davey Johnson. Zachary Fitzwater won the Season 1 Chick-fil-A All-Star Race at this track. So you definitely know that he can get it done here today. Davey Johnson, though, he wants to take that lead right back from the 84. I think it's the 84. Yep, it's the 84. Here comes the 77, Max Newarth, the 98, Kevin Gandara to this inside. And the pack is starting to split up a little bit, up front at least. John Andrews leading this inside lean. Got about ooh, eight cars on that inside there, all right on each other's bumper. The physics of this track, it's just kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. I mean, the, the, this is like a revamped version of Bristol. It's like a three-mile version of Bristol. This track is three miles long, if you didn't already know that. It's a three-mile long Bristol is basically what it is. And, and, and what's better than that? Mixing Bristol and a super speedway. I mean, this is a track that actually originally came with NR2003. This isn't kind of like a download uh, track. This is... A track that was in the original version of NR2003. Of course, I still I have the original version, but uh, you know this is a track that has been around. It's probably one of the first fantasy tracks ever made for NR2003, and I think it's really good. There goes Biff Grafton underneath the 77 of Newarth and the 21 of Davy Johnson for the lead, and Biff Crafton now out front here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. These guys are kind of like bobbing and weaving through this uh, pack here, and that kind of scares me because when you're doing that, it almost seems like you're going to clip somebody and spin around. It seems like that's what's happening when they're doing that. But fortunately, that isn't happening, and we're still green here at Coca-Cola. Now, soon, we'll probably be seeing pit stops, and those can get a little interesting at a track like this comes the 07, Eric Hyden, three wide for second. 
It is still the 43 of Biff Crafton, but Hyden and William Brock have a good run on this inside. And nobody's coming in yet. I'm not entirely sure how many what the uh, fuel window is here, but uh, we'll figure it out soon. This race definitely has a green look to it. As far as I know, we only had one caution the first time we did this. We did it last year. Of course, I have no idea what happened in that race. I don't even remember who won it, to tell you the truth. Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. But uh, don't worry, I won't delete this one. <laughs> I'm a little happier with this phase of my life than I was last year. So, anyway... John Arton, 24, really haven't talked about him much in this race, but he has moved his way up to second place. There he goes underneath the 14. And everybody's still staying out. Garrett Sonor in the 65. He's on this inside. We got the 1 of Cameron Black, the 75 of Dana Mon, and Biff Crafton kind of splitting away from the rest of the field. Mason Powers in the 72, Nathan Stapleton, Johnny Bryant, Max Newworth on this inside. So we had that sort of crash early in the race, but other than that, there hasn't really been anything, you know, contact-wise on the racetrack, and uh, that crash didn't even bring out a caution. There goes Cameron Black to the inside of John Arndt on lap 15 of 51, over a quarter of the way through this race, and there goes the first guy in. It's Nathan Stapleton, but unfortunately for him, nobody's coming with him. The 33 of Nathan Stapleton taking his pit stop now. And he is going to be all alone on this cycle of pit stops. So my guess is the fuel window is about 15 to 18 laps long. Which should... Uh, which could get interesting if you think about it. We might end up having guys pit at the end of the race. Anyways, we should, see a, oh, we should see a majority of these guys come in this time around. Dana Mon is the leader. And that whole inside lane, a ton more guys come in this time. John R. from the outside lane came in. We got Johnny Bryant. We got somebody around. The 57, Marty Johnson. Got spun around coming into the pit row, but he saves it. And no major contact, and here they all come in. We got Max Newworth, Nicholas Gratton, Eric Hyden, Dean Wicker, Tristan Walker, Matt Dalio, Blaine Keys, Marty Johnson, Cody Hagen, Tyler Selzman, Matt Tuck, Nicholas, sorry, I mentioned him, uh, Johnny Bryant, Kevin Gandara, we have the 21, the 44 of Matt Tuck, 21 of Davey Johnson, 25, contact there, John Andrews, 29 on the pit row, that's Nicholas Samadio, the 88 of Cody Hagen, I probably already mentioned him, uh, but there was a lot of guys coming in that time. So, here come the rest of the guys. Led by Mason Powers. Got ourselves Garrett Sonor, Dana Mom, William Brock, Cameron Black, Zachary Fitzwater, Julian Quint, Taro Biff, Crafton, Justin Roberts, Stuart Gratton, Harry Joel Arvin Alonso, and Clint Buchanan. Now, this is a point where Tristan Allen would want the caution to come out. Because he should get his lap back here. He does still have to pit on this cycle. Where is he? There he is. He still has to pit, pit on this cycle, but if he can stay out, a caution comes out, he'll get his lap back, come in, and he'll go to the rear of the field. But I, it does not look like we're going to end up with a caution in this race. As far as I know, though, the caution excuse me, that happened in the race last season here in the Thanksgiving 500... Excuse me. The caution that happened in the Thanksgiving 500 last year was kind of a surprise to us. So you never know when it could happen. Trying to figure out who the leader could be. And I think right at this moment, the leader is Mason Powers in the 72. But I'm not entirely sure if these guys who came a lap earlier than these guys, led by John Arnton and uh, the town of Johnny Bryan, I'm not sure if these guys are going to catch up or not. Now, Tristan Allen, he's back on the lead lap here. He's racing for a position out on the racetrack. Oh, yeah. Leader's definitely going to be Mason Powers, and Garrett Sonora right now is the only guy with him. So two-car breakaway for the lead. But at this kind of racetrack, you know, if you get about four or five guys to form a pack here, like, look at this 24. Look at how much speed he has from the rest of these guys. 
But if we, like, get a pack of cars, you know, the form up, like this, they're going to get a lot of speed and a lot more speed than the leaders, and they'll close right up to those leaders, and it'll be a six-car battle for the lead. There goes Garrett Sonora for the lead underneath of Mason Powers. 65, a dodge. Looking pretty good for Sidnor. Trying to get, oh man, his eighth career win on Napa Fan. He hasn't won since season three of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series at Las Vegas. That was race number three of the season. So it has been since August since this guy has won. Been quite a long losing streak for him. Now we got a four-car battle for the lead. Tristan Allen's still out here in the 66. He's going to have to come in shortly. So it's Johnny Bryant, John Art, Mason Powers, and Garrett Sonora up front. And this is what I was talking about earlier, um, near the end of the race. And actually, we're not even close to the end of the race. And already, we only have about four cars that are battling for the lead. Cameron Black will probably join them soon. Now, if these guys here can form up a big enough pack, get in the straight line, they can easily catch up to the leaders. But right now, they are too far behind to catch up to them anytime soon. These guys are going 244. These guys are going about the same speed, so I don't think they're going to catch up to them. So right now, at least, we're still going to have probably two more sets of pit stops before this thing ends. Probably. There goes Tristan Allen into the pit road, so the caution did not come out for him, and he's going to have to take his pit stop, and he'll probably lose a lap because of it. Guys, it did not get good stops. Cody Hagen, Nicholas Samadio, Tyler Selzman did not get a good stop. He was up there a majority of that run. Jordan Newman, well, he was already back there. Dean Wicker, Davey Johnson, John Andrews did not get good stops. Matt Tuck, he's all by himself. So is the uh, 57 of Marty Johnson. The problem with Johnson, he got spun heading into the pit road. Tristan Walker, William Brock, here Jill Arvin Alonzo. Now, these guys are a little ways off from this big pack here. And, uh... Might have a super pack here soon. <laughs> no pun intended there. <laughs> Jeez, it's it's election season and all that, you know. And if you don't know what a super pack is, I really don't know what it is either. But I know it has something to do with, like, I learned about it in government last year, but I forgot it already. So, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Whoa, this pack had to slow down. I think, oh, Tristan Allen might have bumped up the racetrack and these guys had to check up a little bit. Super pack. I, I was not meaning that <laughs> in that way. Uh, anyways, Mason Powers, get this. He has raced in a lot of races in the Napa or on Napa Fan here, um, and most of them earlier this year. It's been a while since he's raced, but still, considering how many races he has raced in on this channel, he doesn't even have a win. Yes, he doesn't even have a win. He's got a great shot today because we got a five-car battle for the lead right now. And it might be between these five guys to see who gets this win. I'm not sure if these guys... If these guys kind of form up a single-file line, they'll be able to catch up. But they're not doing that. So they're probably going to stay about the same distance between the lead pack here. Johnny Bryant takes the lead. John Arndt, Cameron Black, Mason Powers, and Garrett Sonor in the lead draft. Then in the second pack, we have Julian Quintero, Max Newworth, Zachary Fitzwater, Kevin Yandara, Nathan Stapleton, Nicholas Gratton, Biff Crafton, Eric Kaiden, Justin Roberts, and all these other guys. Then, Marty Johnson all by himself. These guys forming a line, John Andrews, Dean Wicker, Davey Johnson, Matt Tuck, and Jordan Newman. All by himself, Tyler Selzman all by himself, and a lap, and two laps down, actually. No, one lap down, Tristan Allen, Nicholas Samadillo, and Cody Hagen. All 32 cars are still running, only one is a lap down, that is the number 66 of Tristan Allen. And we're coming up on halfway, here in the Thanksgiving 500 for 2015. So John Arndt, he's going to lead it. And a lead, lap number 24, driving the number 24. Congratulations. And John Arn, i got to tell you, he has a very, very impressive resume in NR 2003. A two-time, as far as I know, a two-time champion in the Pokemon Cup Series, which is uh, by TA2 Racing. A Royal Rumble winner. And he hasn't really been in, uh, in the NR 2003 community that long either. I mean, been about a year or so, I think. 
But uh, still, I mean, this guy, he has a lot going for him. And uh, getting this win here, this is a special event. This is a pretty big special event. This would be another impressive win to his NR2003 resume if he can get it done here tonight, today. Whoa, today. Okay, I'm recording it tonight. Well, not tonight, but at night. Back last Tuesday, not this past Tuesday, but last Tuesday. But you guys are seeing it during the day. So, yeah, I know, it's all confusing. Today, I mean, even it's, it's even a day race, and I still said tonight. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, not much going on. It's between these five guys for the lead right now. And these guys these guys might be closing in here. You got Julian Quintero, Kevin Gandora, Zachary Fitzwater. And they're going three wide now. That's not going to help, but still, these guys might be closing in. Look at all these guys on this inside forming a line. Look at this pack. This is the super pack I was talking about. They have formed up, and uh, you know these guys might catch up to the lead pack. It's possible. I think they are closing in. I really think they are. Johnny Bryan out front. Mason Powers. John Arn led that lap. We are over halfway through the Thanksgiving 500 here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. You know, these guys, they can't go double wide for too long because they're going to fall right back and they end up going single file because if they don't go and uh, pick up the draft from the guy in front of them, they're going to fall back. Let's see, we don't see this other pack in the camera picture of the lead pack yet, but I think these guys are slowly closing in. But by the time they catch up to them, we uh, already would have had pit stops. So, I mean, the closer you are to the lead pack, the better you are during the pit stops. So, you want to get as close as you can to them and have a shot at possibly taking that lead. You just got to have a good pit stop. I mean, you saw Tyler Selzman, how good he was early on. He had a bad pit stop, and look at where he is now, 31st on the racetrack. Cody Hagen, Nicholas Amadio, Tristan Allen was involved in the crash, so that's kind of why he's a little low in the field right now. But these three guys right here, you know, they had pretty bad pit stops. And you got this pack here, they didn't have good stops at all, or either, I should say. You got William Brock all by himself in the 14, and then you got the big pack here. You had decent stops, and then you got the guys who had really good stops. They're all kind of organized here. So the guys who had good stops have been up front this whole time, and majority of these laps, they've been, they have been led by John Arndt in the 24. As far as I know, I think John Arndt... I can't remember if he's won here before or not. Let me see. Let me go to the Google Sheets app. Where I keep all that info. Yeah, these guys back here are definitely closing in on our leaders. Our leaders are going single file now, and they are still led by John Arndt. Okay, let's see here. All time Napa fan in our 2003 wins list. Yeah. So I don't know if John Arndt has won before. I think he has. Yeah, he has. He's won once. Oh, yeah, he won the NRLA 500 in Season 3 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. That's his only win on Napa Fan. He's got a great shot to, uh, today, though. I almost said tonight again. Oh, my goodness. There he goes, Powers, to the lead, and I think these guys are coming in. No. John Arndt just let those guys go ahead of him. Hmm, strategy. I don't know what he was doing there, but he just let those guys drive right, oh, excuse me, right by him. When we cross the line next time, I will only have 20 laps to go in this race. Race is going by pretty fast. Got the three of Justin Roberts now leading this pack. And I'm telling you, these guys, they're closing in quickly on the lead pack. But by the time they would get to them, we would have already had pit stops. So I don't think they're going to catch up to this pack before we have another set of pit stops. We should see another set of pit stops here shortly. The fuel window is 15 to 18 laps. And there goes Stapleton in the 33. Now, Stapleton was the first guy in the first time around. And he's going to come in once again in the number 33. Nobody else is going to come with him. Again, all alone on the pit row. But that will start the cycle of pit stops here. 
And this is where you're going to win or lose the race. And what's so interesting here, some guys might just possibly be able to make it on two stops in this race. We have 20 to go at this point. And you know what? I don't think that's possible. I think everybody's going to have to make a pit stop. But those final pit stops, they're going to be right near the end of the race. And you know what? These leaders, whoa! That was the, tw the 10 of Johnny Bryant cutting down the racetrack there. He almost crashed. So we got about half of the guys coming. Well, not really half of them, but quite a few. Yeah, I guess you could say half of them. Half of them coming into the pit road now to start the second. So, well, the second cycle has already been started. Really? So of that lead pack, three of them stayed out. Now, one of them kind of lost the draft from the lead pack. That was Mason Powers. Sid Norris stays out. Cameron Black stays out. Alonzo, Roberts, Crafton, Gratton, Fitzwater, Quintero, Buchanan, Amon, William Brock, Jordan Newman are the 14 guys who have yet to make a pit stop on this cycle. And they should all come in this time. So it's gonna be it's gonna be another opportunity for Tristan Allen to uh, get his lap back because he can stay out a few more laps later than the rest of the guys and get get this I just realized this Tristan Allen can stay out a few more laps than the rest of the guys he might only have to make one more pit stop if it happens to so be that everybody else has to make pit stops right near the end of the race, Tristan Allen might take the lead at the end and steal this thing. It is possible that Tristan Allen can win this race. Right now, he is on the same lap as everybody else. And he can stay out, I say, about, uh, I think it was like three or four laps longer than the rest of the guys. And that is great for him. He makes his stop lap, say, 36. He'll be good to go to the end. I think. He should be. <laughs> the rest of the guys are definitely going to have to come in one more time before this race is over. But Tristan Allen, if he can stretch it long enough, he can make it to the end on one more stop. And an early stop at that. So that's why we're following the 66 right now. He is right now going to be in 22nd place. So he's kind of deep in the field right now. Yeah, I actually, you know what? I don't think that's going to be possible because... See, these guys in front of him, like the 07, he's 21st, and he already made his stop. So, yeah, I think Tristan Allen, he's just going too slow for the rest of the guys. So, yeah, there goes that out the window. Anyways, leader right now is going to be Johnny Bryant in the 10. Garrett Sonor, Cameron Black, just a little ways behind him. You know what, there might be, I don't know. I really don't know. Looks like Garrett Sonor almost had a problem there for a moment. Harry J. Larvin Alonzo has now put himself into the battle of this thing. He's got John Arn helping him. And those guys should catch up to our leaders before this thing is over. But right now, it is Johnny Bryant who is out front in the number 10 here in the Thanksgiving 500. And here's that pack again. This pack has really been good keeping itself together. Excuse me. And if these guys can actually stay in the draft, then these guys, like if these guys stay, you know, two cars, just two cars in the draft, these guys are going to catch up to them. And then they'll form even a bigger pack, and they'll catch up to the leaders. Cameron Black has taken the lead in the number one underneath the 10. Garrett Sonor in the 65 is up to second. I think that this pack here is going to catch up to these two guys. Here, Jalarvin, Alonzo, John Arthur. They're going to catch up to those guys. Then they're going to form a pretty big pack, and then that big pack is going to catch up to the leaders. I think that's what's going to happen. But right now, let's follow the lead. It is right now Garrett Sinor out front here in the Thanksgiving 500 with now um, 15, yes, 15 laps to go in the Thanksgiving 500. Let's see, where is uh, Tristan Allen? Yeah, he's just made his pit stop. And he, he didn't even come close to taking the lead that time around, so tough day for Tristan Allen. You know, it really hurts 
not to do good in a special event because it only happens once. There's only one race. It's not like a full season where you got many opportunities to win. With a special event, you only got one shot. And uh, Tristan Allen just couldn't get that one shot because of that crash earlier in the race. We have gone caution-free so far here in the Thanksgiving 500 for 2015. Cameron Black is the leader with 14 laps to go at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. That means that we have 42 miles left to go in this race around this three-mile racetrack. Johnny Bryant to the inside of the one. And now he is going to be out front. And I was right. That pack caught up to John Arnton here, Joe Larv and Alonzo. Now they're all in one big pack. And I think they're going to close up to our leaders here before this thing is over. Then again, we still have another set of pit stops on our way. And they're going to be right near the end of this race. This thing's going to be very, very interesting. And I'm going to tell you right now that this pack was about the same distance from the leaders as it was when the cycle of pit stops started. So they did not lose any ground on those pit stops. And they are all led by a guy who has led quite a few laps in this race already, John Arnton, 24. So these guys really have a shot at closing up, but I think it's gonna take a little it's gonna take a little bit to get up there. I mean these three guys have been fast all day. Johnny Bryan, Cameron Black, and Garrett Sonor. They've just been super fast all day long. Been out front most of the time. And I think Johnny Bryan might be the strongest of the three right now. He's led quite a few of these laps since the last uh, cycle of pit stops. Well, I will say one thing. The more they go side by side, the slower they're going to go. Biff Crafton in the 43, now leading this pack. I, I really think that any of these guys in this pack still have a shot at this win. At this second pack, I think they still have a shot at this win. I mean, it's all going to come down to that final pit stop. Basically, all you need is a splash and go. You don't need tires on this final pit stop. You shouldn't need tires on this final pit stop, but still, I wouldn't take tires on this final pit stop. I'll just take fuel and get out of there because, you know, the faster the pit stop is, the more likely you are to win the race. And basically, that's what we're boiling down to is this final set of pit stops. That's what's going to determine who wins this race. When we cross the line next time by, it'll be 10 laps to go in the Thanksgiving 500. Cameron Black is the leader in the number one and is all, and only his second ever start here on Napa Fan. Garrett Sonor, he's a longtime veteran, seven wins on this channel. And Johnny Bryant kind of in between those two guys. Right now currently running in the uh, Turkey Hill Series and the Napa Truck Series. There's a rookie over there. He's only racing a few races, not as near as many races as Garrett Sonor, but still he's got quite a bit of experience in that number 10 He's got a good shot of winning here today. We still can't see that second pack from the camera angle of our leaders. But uh, as you can tell, that second pack is not too far behind. And if guys in this pack can get a good pit stop at the end, they might have a shot at winning. Somebody might have a shot at winning. But quite honestly, it might be one of these three guys that gets it. Garrett Tenor, Johnny Bryan, and Cameron Black. They've survived the two pit stops as have done great on pit road both times so far today just gotta make one more good stop and you're gonna have a shot at winning these guys they are constantly changing position constantly so still we really can't choose which one of the three is gonna win this thing yet Garrett Sinor is gonna lead it with nine laps to go here in the Thanksgiving 500 I mean how about Stapleton he came in first and all by himself the first two times, but still he finds himself in this second pack with a shot at winning. And pitting early might... No, it wouldn't benefit him. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think pitting early would benefit Nick or uh, Nathan Stapleton, but uh, we're just going to have to see. I mean, it's kind of tough for guys like John Arndt. And uh, who else was in that pack? Mason Powers. Those two guys were in the lead draft early or in between uh, the cycle of pit stops that we had so far today. And they fell back to this second pack, and they're nowhere near the leader. And these guys, they're starting to get closer, but they're taking too much time to get there. 
So basically, these three guys have been switching positions this whole run. And these guys have slowly, but too slowly, have closed up to him. Johnny Bryant is now the leader in the number 10. And when we cross the line next time, I think it's going to be seven laps to go. Yes, it'll be seven laps to go when we cross the line this time. Basically, we want to follow Stapleton, because Stapleton's going to be the first guy that comes in. And when he comes in, we know that the next lap around, the rest of the guys are going to come in. So, you want to follow Nathan Stapleton in the 33. But you can't, because I'm going to follow the lead. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Anyways, Cameron Black now out front. These guys, I'm telling you, they've been flipping positions more frequently than the lead changed at Talladega in 2010. We have 51 laps in this race. Might just have 52 different leaders. Okay, that didn't. That actually doesn't make sense. We only have 32 cars in the field. But uh, and I like college football. I love college football. College football is my second favorite behind NASCAR. And uh, you know how they change the uniforms so much in college football. I know a lot of you probably watch it. My dad has said they have 13 different uniforms for 12 games in college football. But I mean, seriously, that that's almost right. Speaking of college football, speaking of football, got football today. That's better than football on a Thursday. I'm not really a fan of the NFL as much as I am college. I'm a big college person. I'm a big Alabama Crimson Tide fan. You guys probably already knew that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm big on college. I really don't like the NFL, quite honestly. Anyways, let's not talk about football. Let's talk about this race. Garrett Sonor is now the leader. And... Nathan Stapleton in the 33. I think he is coming in. So here we go. The madness is going to start next time by. These guys are going to come in. And it's with five laps to go here in the Thanksgiving 500. Garrett Sonor, Johnny Bryant, Cameron Black, the top three. Will someone back in here get a good pit stop and steal this race? Or will somebody be able to stay out the whole way? It's just too close to call. I don't think anybody's going to stay out the whole way, but if you're going to be in the pit road, just take gas. You do not need tires this late in the race. This race is not going to restart, even if a caution comes back out, or come, comes out, I should say. How about this? These three guys, oh, they're trying to stretch it. Nobody's coming in this time. How about that? Everybody's staying out. Stapleton coming two laps earlier than the rest of those guys. Johnny Bryant still out front. Cameron Black is slow. Black has a problem. I think these guys are running out of fuel. Well, Black might have run out of fuel there. You know what? I think he might have had a brake check because uh, Stapleton came out of the pit road there. He might have almost got into him. They're side by side for fourth. That's Gandara and Roberts. Oh, my heart's starting the race here. It's going to be a great finish. Here we go. Johnny Bryant comes in. Gandara. The 81. I forget who drives the 81. I'm sorry. Blaine Keys. Some guys come in. But I'm telling you, we might have somebody who's able to stay out to the end of this thing. It's three to go. Here in the Thanksgiving 500, Garrett Sinor is the leader. Cameron Black is second. Justin Roberts is third. Biff Crafton and Herger Larvin Alonzo are the top five. Who's going to do it? Sonor does not have any drafting help, so even if he can stay out the whole way, these guys might be able to stay out as well. We're just going to have to see here. These guys are going to have to come in. Sonor's coming in. Cameron Black, Justin Roberts. And it does appear that they're all coming in this time. So is this going to benefit somebody who came in early? Stapleton was the first guy in, but he was put a lap down at one point in that number 33. I can't tell if these guys are going gas only or not. Yeah, it looks like they are. Some of them probably went gas only. We only have three laps to go. 
And I think this guy's the leader, Johnny Bryan in the 10. He might have done a great job on that uh, pit stop there. He came in before Sonora and the rest of those guys. Uh, does anybody have a, like a full head of steam? Yeah, this guy does, Nathan Stapleton, and he's, he's going to gain, gain a lot of positions here. You know how faster he's going than the rest of these guys. I think it's two laps to go. Yes, it is. It's two laps to go. Oh, boy. How about this? Sidnor, Cameron Black, and Harry Jalarv and Alonzo out front. But Johnny Bryan has the full head of steam in the number 10. It's going to be the white flag next time by. Will Johnny Bryant get enough of a run on these guys, or is it going to be one of these three guys? It's Garrett Sonor, it's Cameron Black, it's Harry Jalarv and Alonzo. It's going to be either Johnny Bryant, Harry Jalarv and Alonzo, Cameron Black, or Garrett Sonor. Garrett Sonor will lead at the white flag of the Thanksgiving 500 one more time around the Coca Cola Super Speedway. Alonzo in the five of a great run to the inside. Johnny Bryan is too far behind. It's between the 5, the 65, and the 1. Still a shot for Sidnor and Black. But Alonzo, the new leader here at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway, and the whole day he wasn't even in the lead draft. Second place is going to change. Cameron Black trying to get to the inside of Sidnor. That's only going to help the 5. Hairgel Arvin Alonzo. In the number five, coming out of turn number four, plays the pit strategy perfectly. And a surprise win here today. Alonzo wins the Thanksgiving 500 at the Coca-Cola Super Speedway. I did not see that coming, and I will say why. During basically the whole race, I kind of did mention this, the whole race it was Sinor, Black, and Bryant, basically. Alonzo was never in that lead draft. He was only he was always in that second pack. But somehow he found a way to get out front in the final lap. And if I'm not mistaken, that might have been the only lap that was led by Alonzo all day long. I just can't believe it. But hey. A non-American wins the Thanksgiving 500 again. I, as far as I know, I think... I really... I, I totally forget... I totally forget. If you guys know who won that race last year, please let me know. I would like to know who won the Thanksgiving 500 in 2014. I don't know who did it. I do know who won this year's, though, and that is Harajel Arvin Alonso in the number five. A great performance by that team. Great pit stop at the end, and that's what got him out front to steal the win on Thanksgiving Day. Alonzo, Sidnor, Cameron Black. Johnny Bryant and Justin Roberts in the top five. Then it's Blaine Keys, Kevin Gandara, Tristan Walker, Clint Buchanan, and Zachary Fitzwater. The top ten. Only one guy. Actually, they all finished on the lead lap. That's good. That's good. Great job, guys. I think Tristan Allen is able to stay out to the end there, but he's going to finish in last. Tough break for him. See Selzman, Johnson, Haggins, Amadio. Uh, they were doomed from the first uh, pit stop. Didn't really get good stops at the beginning. Uh, but anyways... Thank you guys very much for watching. If you watched the whole thing, make sure you spend a lot of time with your family today because you just wasted a lot of your Thanksgiving. But anyways, if you watched the whole thing, thank you very much. It's much appreciative. Um, I, I really wouldn't ever expect anybody to watch the full-length race, but you know I have it there if you want to. And if you want to watch the whole race, go right ahead. I'm not saying you can't do that, but I would never expect that out of anybody. Basically, what I would want is for somebody to just check where they finished and leave a like on the video. I don't ask anything else except that. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Thanksgiving. It's going to be a great day. So spend some time with your family if you're in America. And even if you're not in America, spend time with your family because why not? So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll say it again. Happy Thanksgiving to all you Americans out there. And even if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, just have a good day. So thank you guys. I'll say this again. Thank you guys very much for watching. Congratulations to Hair Joe Larvin Alonzo. And I will see you guys later.